Hello, and thank you for stopping by and viewing my video. Uh, this is like uh, the last video I did where I did the upgrade from the uh, Macintosh SE30 to the Quadra 605. But in this build, uh, what I've done is I've integrated an iPad LCD, and I have a Raspberry Pi installed, and I have a Quadra 605 LC475, same board, is also installed inside the cases. Um, now we can use this as a media center through the USB 2.0 port that's on the rear. Go ahead and hit movie. Okay. <laughs> Pretty neat, huh? So, yeah. Okay. Please, if you like this, hit that subscribe button. Feel free to make a comment. Be kind. Okay. Let's get to it. Let's start with a comparison to an original SE30 chassis, and you'll be able to see how much metal I had to remove for this build. Now, towards the upper left, you can see where I have a cutout for the SCSI cable and for battery access. Then you can see the mounting holes that I had to drill for the stereo speakers and the metal I had to remove to get clearance for the Ethernet card. Towards the front, we have holes that are drilled for the LCD board driver bracket. And on the rear, you can see where I had to remove metal for the Ethernet card, the RAM, and for the VRAM. Now we can just slide the board in. Now in my last build, I went ahead and I took the internals of an original SE30 power supply and I replaced it with uh, an Antec AT352 350 watt power supply, sort of an overkill. And then on the rest of the board, I had gutted it and installed the uh, LCD driver board. Now I'm going to have stereo speakers in this one and I need them towards the bottom where the power supply goes. Uh, I want them there so I can have access to the vent holes so I don't have to drill sound holes in the case. So I'm going to get rid of the entire base and make my own. This is 16 gauge sheet metal with holes drilled out so I can have wires on the back. There's a sound hole. And here is our modified Seasonic power supply. And if you look, there's the power for the Raspberry Pi, our common and on wire, power for the fan, and our positive 5, negative 5, and positive 12 that go to the LC475. Now these are going to connect to a double throw three pole three position switch. And here you can see where I took the end of an original power supply and cut it off so where I could keep the original power switch and plug wired in a cord. And there's a cutout for our three pole switch. Yep, I like that. Now, here is our negative 5 volt circuit. Now I took this from an SE analog board and believe me I had surplus of them. Yes, I could have made one, but I am lazy. Here's the positive 12 for our LCD. Now the old fan for the SE30 was a bit loud for my taste. I think it comes in at something like a 24 decibels and it moves 15 CFM. I am going to go ahead and replace this with a brand new Silent X. Now the Silent X it moves 18 CFM and I believe that it comes in at something like 16 decibels. Um, I can't hear it. Maybe you can but my hearing is shot. But uh, let's go ahead and get this installed onto our new analog board or base plate. All right here it is. We have everything installed. Our Seasonic power supply. Here we have our LCD that's coming out the back and here are our wires that are going to be going to the LC475 board. The main wires are negative 5, positive 5, positive 12 uh, are running up through here and they are going to connect to the center poles on the switch. Okay then the Raspberry Pi it's going to attach to the outside 5 volt. These are going to run to uh, through there to the final outside row of poles. That is where our switch is going to mount, right there. Okay, now uh, you can see where I ran the fan wires out the back. Now, let's get this cleared out of the way and plug in our cord. And now, if we want to turn on our power supply, all we have to do is flip the switch. And here it is installed onto our modified chassis. Ah, oh, came out great. Now you can see where I capped off the uh, excess wires and I used liquid tape. I love this stuff. It really is liquid electrical tape. Here we have our switch and you can see where I have the uh, main power supply wires. They're coming down. They're running through that center row of poles. And then we have the very outside where we have the positive five for the Raspberry Pi. 
Now if we go ahead and spin it around, let's take a look at those wires. Now they would look like they would hang up when you put the rear case on, but they don't. It slides on with no problem. Here is our LCD driver board bracket made out of an iMac hard drive tray. And I don't really need those controls because I have the IR sensor uh, for the board and it's going to mount right there. Now here it is installed. Look down there and we can see the IR sensor. Ah looks good. You can see where we have the wires concealed. They're not going to be flopping about in the compartment, the IR sensor. And we're going to tighten this bolt down in a second. It's actually going to interact with our uh, floppy drive bracket and SCSI to SD. Plug in the LCD and we're ready to go. Okay, now here is the floppy drive. I went ahead and rebuilt it. I re-greased the chassis and I uh, cleaned the heads. Now this is your ejection gear and that small gear, this is the one that breaks all the time. But if you can bend that gear, then it's not going to break on you. It's a good gear. You're good to go. Okay, here it is. Floppy drive installed in the bracket along with the SCSI to SD. Good strong mount. Oh, yeah. And look, I wired in a blue activity light. I like that a lot better than the uh, old amber light that came in the SC30. And here it is. We have it installed just like you would normally with the four bolts on the bottom. And there's the activity light coming down from the LCD driver bracket. All right, looks good. Now, stereo speakers from an iMac first generation. I love these things. Let's get them installed. Yep, nice and tight. Now, we have to wire them up to the LCD driver board with this custom cable that I made because it didn't come with one. Plugs in right there. And then we're going to route the wires underneath the SCSI to SD. Yeah, looking good. Now, <clears throat> these speakers are only for the Raspberry Pi and whenever you use the uh, media display or the monitor is only a media display. Now, this is why I decided to use this set of cases for this project. To say I was upset whenever I received this SC30 is a bit of an understatement. The uh, CRT broke off and it was bouncing around the inside and did all kinds of damage. Uh, the e-recycler who sent it, they might as well not have even packed it. In fact, there was no packing material around it. But uh, you know what? We're going to see if we can save it. And save it we did. Look at that. <laughs> it's beautiful. Let's compare that to uh, an original SC30 uh, front bezel. Oh, look at that area. Ah, this is going to be great. Now you can see where the uh, inside, where the uh, mounts broke off for the CRT, and I had to add extra plastic where I could mount the uh, new LCD. Uh, now, whenever I put this through the dishwasher, I went ahead and I removed the uh, speaker. But when you go to reinstall it, make sure you put down the gasket. Because if you don't put that down, that speaker is going to rattle like there's no tomorrow whenever you uh, install it. Ah, there it is. And I went ahead and I took an old soldering iron. I bent over the tabs just like they did from the factory. Ah, it's good and secure. It's not going anywhere. Ah, yeah, and here it is. This is our new iPad LCD. Uh, iPad 2 surplus new old stock i got from china let's install it in the front bezel now if you look right there i had a clip that was missing so i had to fashion a restraining bar it's going to fit right here and there it is now we have all the screws tie, uh, tightened down then ah oh, wow look at that man that is beautiful absolutely almost no gap that came out perfect oh yeah now we have it installed on the chassis along with everything else now it's time to install the Raspberry Pi 3 Bravo with Wi-Fi and a 32 gigabyte card right there through the PDS slot. And here's the bracket I fashioned for it. Now that rear bracket, it's going to prevent any flex whenever I plug and unplug the uh, cables for the uh, keyboard. Uh, now this USB 2 port, I had to modify that because I would not have been able to plug in the HDMI cable if I hadn't. Oh, that came out great. Ah. Here's an update. I had to go ahead and move the Raspberry Pi uh, forward one half inch uh, because I found whenever I put the rear case on that I could not access the uh, bottom two USB ports. So, uh, like I said, I just had to move it forward. And again, you can see why I had to modify that USB 2.0 uh, port. Uh, absolutely, again, no way I wouldn't have been able to put in the uh, HDMI cable. And uh, here is the port that I uh, modified. You can get these off eBay for 275. Also, I had to ground down that uh, 
circular part because if I hadn't, um, I would not have been able to fit it flush against the plate. Ah, great. All right, here it is, our trial boot of the Raspberry Pi. Ah, <laughs> all right, man. Well, at least we know our Pi works. Uh, come on, let's get to the desktop. Let's speed it up a little bit. Doom, de doom, de doom, de doom, de doom. Okay. All right. Get on the internet. Well, let's do YouTube. Ah, let's search for Quadra 605. Let's see what we get. Ah, this thing's kind of slow. <laughs> there it is. All right, we can get my view count up. Yeah, I wonder how fast this thing is with videos. Uh, all right. Well, that's looking good. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get out of this and go ahead and shut her down. Uh, now, like the uh, Macintosh Quadra 605 LC475, same board, the uh, Raspberry Pi doesn't have a soft power off for the ATX power supply, so we're going to have to turn off the main power switch on the rear of the Macintosh. Now, this is the selector switch all the way over this direction was the Raspberry Pi. The center position uh, was for the display only, and all the way over is for the Macintosh Quadra 605. And here's the board. Now, make sure you have a good battery installed. If you don't have a good battery installed, you're going to have a lot of video problems. Uh, you may have distorted video, or you may not have any video whatsoever. Okay, then we... And here's our modified power cable. I had an extra female Molex connector uh, that I went ahead and I chopped down to 8 pin so I can interface with the ATX. Just plug it in. And there it is. Look how low profile that is. That's going to have no problem sliding in. Uh, here's the old Macintosh uh, HD15 connector that I cut off and I soldered on a VGA cable. You can find the pinouts online, easy. Make sure you have that ferrite bead installed or you're going to get it static on the screen. Uh, you can pick up these VGA connectors for a pack of five for about $1.50 on eBay. And let's go ahead and plug in our SCSI cable. And finally, our Ethernet card. All right. Now, to put it in, we just go ahead and route through the SCSI cable. And then we go ahead and route through our video cable. Slide board forward. Let's go ahead and get the power plug uh, connected. Now, let's go ahead and plug in our mono speaker right there. And we're going to need a long floppy drive cable that we get from a Macintosh 2. We slide that through a PDS slot. Plenty of room to get it connected. And we've got it routed through there, and we just plug it into the rear of our floppy drive. All right, good and secure. Now let's get that SCSI cable in, and we're ready to go. Now I tried to leave access for the battery, but I was wrong. I don't think uh, I'm going to be able to get to it, but that's okay. The uh, board is pretty easy to slide in and out. Okay, plug our keyboard cable in. ADB, plug our power cord in, make sure it's selected to LC475 on the selector switch. And five, four, three, two, one. Ha! Boot tone. Okay. Well, Ah, uh, there she goes. Loading extensions. Yeah, look at that blue activity light. Oh, yeah, that works. I like that. Uh, right now, it's running Mac OS 7.5. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, yeah, I know. There we go. Look, we've got one, two, three drives, four drives on the desktop. Stuff and expander. Let's go ahead and take a look at about this Mac. And if we look at the RAM, it looks like it's uh, about 129 megabytes are not being used out of 132. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. This is something I forgot to do. So please, 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 please cross your fingers. 
I forgot to test the floppy drive before I did the final install. Every time I rebuild a floppy, I, um, I test it before I install it. So let's see what this does. This is a system seven disc. So listen how quiet, <laughs> look how fast that was. Oh, wow. That is phenomenal. Did you see how fast it read that disc? Here, let's try that again. I just want to say, look, watch how fast that is. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Three seconds to the desktop. Three seconds. That is phenomenal. I like that. All right, let's try the uh, monitors. Uh, let's see, we've got 640 by 480, and let's go ahead and hit six, 800 by 600. Okay. Uh, you know what? That's still not bad. I can live with that. I mean, it's, it, um, this is an iPad screen, so these icons aren't that much smaller than what you would have on your iPad to start with. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I can, I, I can go with that. Let me go ahead and eject the disk. Ah, and you know what? Look, I forgot about this. Here is the uh, remote, and if we look, here's a menu. Yeah, and then you can get out of it. Oh, yeah, man. Look, that is something. Okay, let's go ahead and shut her down. Now, remember, the LC475 does not have soft power, so we have to manually turn off the main power switch. I like it. I like the way that came out. So, here's where we're at. We have the iPad screen with the driver board, brand new power supply, a brand new fan, double throw, three pole, three position switch, stereo speaker, SCSI to SD, rebuilt floppy drive, Raspberry Pi 3 Bravo, uh, USB 2.0 port, and Quadra 605 slash LC475 board. Oh, uh, yeah. I like it. This is going to be good. Let's go ahead and move on to the cases now. Okay, here I spliced in the 605 back plate to the SE30 case. Now I'm going to go ahead and plastic weld it in some more, and I'm going to slurry mix it. Oh, I'm going to use a lot of slurry mix. It's going to come out good. Of course, I'm a little bit prejudiced about it, but I think that this came out absolutely super. Um, that looks great. In fact, I think I may like that better than the last mod that I did. Let's get a close-up to that. Yep. Look at that. Oh, yeah. I put a lot more uh, slurry on here this time. Now, here you can see I did the plastic weld on top, and I did it right there. And then I did this right here. You can see where I, uh, where I plastic welded in the panel for the switch. Now, I had to file this down so I could get clearance for the Raspberry Pi to uh, stick out and have access. So, now, I put this plate here because... I uh, didn't like all these threads sticking out the back, so I did that to take up the space, and I, I just think it looks better. I don't know. We'll see.